on guys, welcome back to the channel. We got a cool video today. Today we sit down with Lester starting our student spotlight series on this YouTube channel where I get to sit down with people who I have worked with to scale their Amazon businesses in our Amazon Playbook program. I met Lester about eight to nine months ago, I think at this point. He came to me with a, you know, a 20, $20 to $30,000 a month Amazon business and we worked hard together to transform that business into now a business that's generating well over $100,000 a month and looking to do $2 million in sales in 2023. So cool stuff. With that being said, stick around for the video and let's talk to Lester and see what clicked for him. Lester, what's going on? Thanks for joining me, my man. Yes, thank you for having me. Happy New Year and Happy New Year to the uh, the viewers who we got here. Yeah, it's been a minute. Can you believe we had first started working together about what, seven, eight months ago? Yeah, it was last February. <clears throat> crazy. About to be a year. Yeah, it's crazy. And so back then, right, January, February of last year, as we started talking and began our work together, you were probably sitting around what, like 20, 30, 40,000 a month, somewhere in that range? Yeah, it was mid 20s. Yeah. Okay. And obviously you had just given me an, an update offline here, but give the viewers kind of your update in terms of what sort of business you were running in December, what the numbers looked like and, and kind of where you stand currently. Yeah. So December was my, you know, official first year Q4 where I had information, I, you know, I was prepared for it. So I did 105, 110. I got to look the numbers exactly, but it's around there. And, you know, like, it's crazy to think like where I started just, you know, like, few months ago but like it just shows you how much like amazon really compounds not just yep. like your revenue but your skill in general as well yeah i mean that, that's something that i mean obviously all of us talk about quite a bit but let's let's kind of dissect and dig into the delta of those two businesses right because they're, i mean at this point they're probably two very distinct and separate businesses in terms of like the sort of operation you were running back then in january february before we started working together and obviously um, currently the sort of spread that you get going on now, what is kind of like those biggest differences, um, that you kind of attribute the, the numbers to? Yeah. So the biggest thing that really stands out was like setting and tracking your spend goal, you know, yeah. as, you, as you mentioned, like a lot, like if you want to reach a certain like revenue goal, you simply, you know, reverse engineer that and mm -hmm. being able to track that month by month, you kind of you know, look back into it. It's like an athlete, right? Like after a game, they can watch replay of like what they did, what they can do better. It's kind of like that, but you'd be able to see your numbers and you can also use, you know, like for example, inventory lab to kind of analyze, like, was that a good product I purchased? Is this something that I can replan? So there's a lot of things regarding data that is very important that kind of helps you, you know, your growth with the uh, Amazon business. Yeah, I mean, it's something I allude to all the time is, is you know, the data aspect of this business, right? One, from a, a product detail perspective, right? Really being able to understand and comprehend what's going on under the hood and being yeah. able to use that information to forecast and make those accurate purchasing decisions. But two, from an overall and macro perspective, what's going on with your business, right? How do we, how do we use the data that our business is generating and providing us to keep kind of um, our, our business guided and, and going towards, you know, the direction that we want? Um, and so from a sourcing perspective, has that really changed much? The sort of products, are you going deeper in products now? Are you kind of shifting categories? What does your sourcing look like now compared to what it was? And then how has that changed? Yeah. So before when, you know, I was fairly as a beginner in Amazon, I was going for pretty much anything that I could flip on. Right. But the more I was doing it, you gain experience and learn how to read Keepa is you, you kind of learn like how you approach things but also not saying like a gamble but like you analyze like you see the future a little bit by going into the past so you look into the yeah. past what's going on you can almost see a pattern and kind of predict how it's going to do you know depending if it's a seasonal item or if it's an item that always sells depending on rank and you know keep a history competitive sellers and so on and so forth and i would imagine part of the scaling that your business has seen is, is just purely because you're have the confidence and the ability and obviously the, the capital to go deeper in products. Yes, absolutely. So for me, like I like to mix both. So there's some items that I'm not going too deep, but they're giving me a higher like ROI. 
versus like mm-hmm. there's some items that I can go deep. Volume is very good. Velocity is good. However, the margin is a little bit low. So for me, the way I see it, it kind of equals out at the end because I have these items that, you know, giving me a little bit more margin that can make up a little bit of the high volume items that, you know, flies really quick. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, a dollar profit is a dollar profit. No matter exactly. if it's product X or product Y. Yeah. Right? Um, and in terms of your day-to-day operation, obviously you're not prepping anything. What does that look like for you? Do you have any VAs? Do you have any sourcers, buyers? What does your kind of uh, business look like now? Yeah, completely day and night as I started. You know, um, I was in Miami in an apartment high rise. So I was doing my <laughs> prep there. So as you can imagine, boxes and stuff everywhere. You know, you, you've been there. And to where it is now where, you know, I, I have more time. So for me, like I enjoy reading as you can see these books behind me. So, you know, I have a nice routine uh, daily where, you know, I, I do a little bit of work. I go for a workout, you know, I read a book, I go out. And so it, it completely like changed the whole business and leveraging like a prep center, a virtual assistant to do that. Um, really, you know, help a lot and propel that growth. Yeah. And so let's, let's kind of, um, dig into that VA. Are they, they're sourcing for you? I would imagine. Yes. So my first VA was, you know, just standard sourcer and, and actually end up firing them. So this year I'm going to do a complete rehire, but I also want to add additional VA to kind of do like the back end of Amazon. So pretty much like admin VA. Right. And then obviously we're in, we're in January now, 2023. Yes. What is your outlook for the next year? Any specific plans? What is your, you know, your goal numbers? How are we looking for 23? Yeah. So 23, um, I want to grow like where my revenue versus last year. So I'm aiming for 1.5 mil revenue reach goal, probably two mil. That's kind of like my reach goal. And also, you know, as we talked earlier, um, possibility and private label, maybe launch one or two products there. Been really thinking hard about that. So those are the two main things in terms of, you know, Amazon stuff that I want to focus on 2023. Yeah. Who would have thought? It just started, you know, 15, <laughs> 20, crazy, crazy. Fast forward a year. And yeah. Doing 1.5 mil or looking to do 1.5, 2 million. Um, so with that being said, obviously there's, there's probably going to be people listening to this interview who either haven't started doing Amazon in the beginning stages. What sort of your recommendation for them, suggestion, motivational speech? What is uh, What do you have to say to them? Yeah, like I, again, it's it's only been a year for me, so I would say soak in as much information as you can. I mean, you got Garrett here that has plenty of information, content online, you know, YouTube, Instagram. And again, just soak in information, learn day to day. And when you see these, you know, sellers out there doing million, two million, whatever, don't like, don't be envious to them. Like there's something to take away. They're obviously doing something well, you know, use that inspiration to get better and also, you know, put your head down. That's the biggest thing is in the beginning, it's going to be a grind, but then, you know, the more you, you learn your skill gets better and, you know, um, it's only up from there. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point, right? Sourcing in itself is is a, a remarkable journey, right? Obviously, you spend hours and hours sourcing in the beginning, but the value of that time is is unfortunately pretty small, right? You put in all this time sourcing, looking at all these products and, and discouraged enough, right? You don't find much. But as you continue to stay committed to sourcing, right, over months and months and months of time, compounded the knowledge, the skills, the, obviously the capital, the value of that sourcing right. time exponentially grows as you be able to restock products and replenish and look at products in a different perspective. Your business just obviously as, as you're living proof exponentially grows and turns into something that, you know, I mean, obviously you're that testimonial to it, living full time off of it. It's amazing, dude. It's amazing. Cool, man. Um, I, well, first of all, I appreciate your time. Um, where can the, uh, the viewers find you specifically to connect with you? Yes. Um, I have an Instagram. Lester John official also started a YouTube channel. So has some content there if you want to learn more Amazon, but again, thank you for having me. My man, we'll talk soon. All right. Thank you so much. Adios. All right. Else, guys, if you, if you uh, value the video, value the content, put a like down there, share it to someone that you also 
no likes Amazon and we'll see you in the next video.